Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the difference between iEnumerable and iQueryable. And I'm going to do that through an example. So first, I'm going to quickly create a console application in .NET Core. And I'm going to name it as iEnumerable iQueryable.demo. So the iNumerable is an interface which returns an enumerator, meaning anything which implements iNumerable has to return an iNumerator. An iNumerator is used for iterating through an array. That's the main definition of iNumerable. On the other hand, iQueryable is something which is derived from iEnumerable and it is supposed to be implemented by data provider. So the main fundamental difference between iEnumerable and iQueryable is iEnumerable, first of all, is the base class and it is used mainly if we want to expose an array and we want to iterate through the array. Whereas iQueryable is for similar purpose, but it is mainly for data provider. Meaning if you have a SQL server or some other data provider and you you want to provide features on top of SQL Server or some other data provider which is similar to iEnumerable, then you implement iQueryable. Now what I'm going to do is in this demo, I'm going to walk through using Entity Framework Core and show when we get the result from Entity Framework Core and cast it to iEnumerable versus iQueryable, what is the difference in the query pattern? And from there, we are going to discuss some of the design patterns, when to use iEnumerable versus when to use iQueryable. So let's first add the desired NuGet packages and the framework core and we need entity framework core dot SQL server so once we have these two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this table, which is employees in the EF demo database that I have. This database is something I have used in my past demos. So first let's create an employee class. And we can annotate it with the table properties. And we're going to say employees. That's the name of the table. And then we're going to have the properties ID. Past name. Last name. Address. Now this property name in the database is also same. So I don't have to use any annotation there. So once I'm done creating this class, the next thing is to create the employee context. In the employee context, we want this class to be derived from DB context. And then once the DB context is derived, we need a constructor for passing the connection string. And let's declare the connection string. And the next thing we need is a property which will expose the DB set of employees. And we're going to name it as employees. Now, once we have that, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to override the on configuring method and inside of that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the option builder to configure SQL Server. So use SQL Server and here I'm going to give the connection string. So now it is configured to use SQL Server. The other thing we want to use is the only way to see what is the difference between iEnumerable and iQueryable is if we log the query which is generated. For logging, I'm going to use the console logger. So let me add the NuGet package for that. So it is microsoft.extension.logging.console. So I'm going to install that. The next thing I'm going to do here is in this class itself, I'm just going to do is I'm going to declare uh, I logger factory and I'm going to create and for logging builders 
I'm going to say dot add console. So this is going to add the console logger. Once I have that, I can go here and in the option builders and I can use use logger factory method and pass the logger factory that I created. So this will add the console logging options to the employee context. So now I have created the employee context and the employee it's time to go here and create an employee context. And for the connection string I'm going to pass the connection string from my database here. Now once the employee context is created, what I can do is first let me use I enumerable of employee and equal to context dot employees dot where employee ID is greater than one. So we are creating, we are getting all the employees ID is greater than one. I have to declare the variable. So, okay, so now let me get this to the next line. So we are getting all the employees where ID is greater than one. So in the database, now since we have five employees, we should get the last four. And then we can do, you know, for each employee in employees and we can do console dot right line and here we can say so this is going to print the name of the employee the reason we need iterator so that the enumerator is executed so now if we do that and let's just run this application and see what is the behavior of the query in the console. I have to make sure I change the database. Now let me run this application and see what is the behavior of the queries. So if I run the application, I can see that here the query is select ID address first name last name from employee where ID is greater than one which is expected and I am getting all the four names that are expected. Now let's change a little bit here and let's say var top employees equal to employees dot take and let's say two. So we're taking the top two employees. Now let's run and see what is the behavior of the query in the console. So if we run you can see that the query has not changed. It is still select first name address, last name from employee where ID is greater than one. And then, okay, I have to make a change because here I say top employees. So now let me run and see what is the behavior in the console. So now if I run, I'll see that the query is exactly same, right? It is still where ID is greater than one. There's nothing else is added. And then I'm seeing the two names for the two of the employees, which is two and three, four and five are not shown, which means that the I enumerable is actually getting everything in memory and then just selecting the top two from in memory query. Now let's do the same thing with I queryable. And let's first comment this out and continue using employees and see what is the behavior. And then we'll add the take two and see what is the behavior. So now if I run, the query is same as I enumerable. It is select ID address, first name, last name from employee, where ID is greater than one and four of them are printed out. Now let me uncomment this part of the code and use top employees. And let's run the program now. And now you will see that it is selecting the top two that I provided. So it is saying select top of the variable, whatever the variable I'm passing, select top of ID address, first name, last name, where employee, from employees, where ID is greater than one. So this is the fundamental difference between an I queryable and I enumerable is that I enumerable always works on 
in-memory objects. That means if you are using a data provider and then implementing I enumerable, it is going to get everything in memory and then execute. Whereas I queryable creates the query and executes that on the data provider and brings back the expected result. And then on top of that, you can run other operations. So that is the fundamental difference between I enumerable and I queryable. And I queryable is always used by the data providers. For example, Entity Framework Core implements I queryable. Now you can build your own I queryable on other data sources. For example, if you want to build on top of DynamoDB, which today doesn't have an uh, implementation of I queryable, then maybe you can do that. DynamoDB is a database in AWS, uh, which is a managed database service. Similarly, there are other, other data provider on top of which we can implement I queryable. So this is all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are watching my channel for the first time and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to it thanks so much for watching this video